comparison between E1 and E2 uh, elimination reactions. So we will compare both uh, elimination reactions with respect to each other uh, on account of different factors that influence um, both the mechanism. But before addressing those uh, factors, let's have a check at the mechanism of uh, each reaction so that we could understand what exactly E1 and E2 stand for. So let's consider first E1 mechanism. which is known as unimolecular elimination reaction. Consider a reaction in which a substrate reacts in the presence of methanol and we get a product of alkene So it is two strap mechanism. Strap one involves slow ionization of substrate. Which is reversible and we get a carbocation second step the carbocation lose beta proton to a base which is methanol in this case for generating alkene so the first step is slow it is rate determining step the second step is fast as only one molecule is uh, involved in the slow step therefore the kinetic is unimolecular rate of reaction is equal to the concentration of substrate that's why we call it unimolecular because the rate of reaction only depend upon the concentration of substrate. As far as the uh, E2 mechanism is concerned, it is simple. E2 mechanism are bimolecular. Reaction. For a bow reaction, consider the mechanism, it is a single strap mechanism. For example, we have substrate, here we have beta proton, where strong base abstract the beta proton. And one pair of electrons shift over here and the bromine atom leaves the molecule so all uh, these uh, changes take place in a single step and that's why we call E2 mechanism as concerted and we get the product like this both the abstraction of uh, beta proton and the expulsion of living book take place in a single step so that's why it's kinetic where rate depend upon the concentration of substrate and base that's why it is bimolecular in character so this single uh, step mechanism in which uh, the base strong base usually uh, abstract a beta proton for expelling and leaving group so now we will uh, check our different factor that compare E1 with E2 mechanism. Here I am factor. So the first factor is base. Usually E2 requires strong base.
because strong base is uh, needed for expulsion of or abstraction of beta proton and as far as E1 is concerned no need of strong base as we have noted over here we use hydroxide in E2 which is strong base and as far as methanol is concerned over here this is the weak base here uh, methanol play out as a solvent we have strong bases such as sodium methoxide sodium hydroxide, sodium methoxide sodium ethoxide sodium amoid even sodium hydride bulky bases such as DBN DBU these are all uh, strong bases which promote E2 elimination reaction or favor E2 or E1 mechanism. Consider the second factor, solvent. For E1, good ionizing solvent is required. And for E2, there is no such need. No need of good ionizing solvent. Because uh, in E1, as we uh, have checked in the first step, it's uh, uh, a slow ionization of substrate. Therefore, a good solvent can ionize the substrate swiftly. Therefore, good ionizing solvent is required in E1, not in E2. As far as the third factor is concerned, uh, which is uh, about substrate. So, in both cases, uh, we uh, checked out that we get alkene. Usually, uh, highly substituted alkene are more stable as compared to less substituted so only a highly substituted alkene could be obtained in E1 or E2 elimination reaction when the starting substrate is bulky therefore for both E1 and E2 the rate of reaction will be fast when the starting substrate is tertiary in character in secondary the rate of reaction will slow down which will further slow down in primary so the rate of uh, both E1 and E2 elimination reaction will be false in tertiary alkyl halide. As far as uh, the fourth factor is concerned, it is about uh, stereochemistry. As uh, in both cases, like for example here, we have a substrate like this and we get two products like this one is in major proportion where the other in minor proportion one is dry substituted where the another is mono and we know that a dye substituted is more stable than a mono substituted product as the uh, E1 mechanism is concerned which uh, uh, lead to formation of a carbocation therefore the orientation of a proton or beta proton is the third material uh, doesn't matter because even give rise to formation of carbocation. As far as E2 is concerned, it is regioselective. It 
Stereo Select Tool and Stereo Perfect. From Bridge of Selectivity, we mean that the double bond will form only at that position which could give more substituted alkene. For example, here this position will have a double bond rather than the terminal double bond. So we can say that both E1 and E2 are Rigio selective. In this case, the major product is known as that few product. And the minor product is known as Hoffman product. So this is uh, about regio selectivity. As far as stereo selectivity is concerned, uh, it uh, uh, tells us that the sorting material will uh, give rise to formation of different stereo isomers such as cis and trans. Usually, cis uh, is less stable as compared to trans, therefore, trans will dominate the product site. So, stereo selectivity stands for uh, that. Uh, the sorting material will generate a different stereo isomer. As far as stereo specific uh, uh, reaction is concerned, stereo specific reaction is related to only those substrates where there is only one beta proton with respect to uh, uh, light or the living group. So, one of the sorting uh, uh, stereo isomer will give one product, and another stereo isomer or di stereo isomer of the substrate will generate another stereo isomer in the product side. So in stereo specific reaction we get only one product. As far as in stereo selective is concerned we get more than one product. Usually uh, stereo chemistry is important in E2 elimination reaction. Both proton and the leaving group should be in anti peri planar orientation. When both the group are at 180 degree, then the reaction will take place swiftly. And the last uh, factor is kinetic. As we have noted earlier that E1 is bimolecular or unimolecular. where E2 is bimolecular. To summarize, E1 is a two-step mechanism. The first step involves flow ionization of substrate uh, for generating a carbocation. Here, this is first step and we get a carbocation. In the second step, the carbocation with beta proton for giving a product which is alkene in case. So E1 is uh, unimolecular and E2 is bimolecular. E2 is a single step mechanism where E1 is a two step mechanism. This is second step. As far as uh, base is uh, concerned, so in E2 we require strong base and E1 no uh, such requirement is needed. These are all strong bases. As far as solvent is concerned, good ionizing solvent is required for E1 for this so that it could promote ionization. And as far as E2 is concerned, no such requirement is needed. Substrate should be bulky, that is, tertiary for promoting swift E1 or E2 elimination reaction. As far as the chemistry is concerned, it is important in case of E2 elimination reaction where both the living group and substrate should be anti periplanar conformation. E2 is the regio selective, stereo selective, and stereo specific. E1 is also regio selective because we get major product. And as far as uh, the last factor kinetic is concerned, so it is bimolecular in case of E2 and unimolecular in case of E1. In E1, the rate of reaction depends upon the concentration of substrate alone, where in E2, the rate of reaction depends upon the concentration of both substrate and base. Thank you for watching the video.